Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Emotional return for some of the Jamaican students who left war-torn Ukraine. Russia justifies its rocket attack on Ukraine as its invasion continues. And later in sports, Ricky Hill steps down as Montego Bay United boss. I'm Machine Masters and here are the news in details. Russian President Vladimir Putin has listed the denazification of Ukraine as some sort of justification for his invasion. His declaration follows a rocket attack this week which damaged the area near the Bayanyar Holocaust Memorial. More from the CNN. Air raid sirens in Uman. Civilians seeking shelter from Russian bombs in what Vladimir Putin says is partly a campaign to rid Ukraine of a Nazi leadership. The absurdity of this claim lost on no one, here heading to the basement of a synagogue. The Jewish population of Ukraine has suffered terribly over the last few hundred years. It's had uh, pogroms that have been inflicted on it by the Tsarist regime. It suffered miserably under Stalin. And of course, the Jews here were murdered en masse by Hitler. The tomb of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov is a pilgrimage site for thousands of Hasidic Jews and has flourished under Ukraine's recent governments. Now the streets of its Jewish community are almost deserted, the result of Putin's so-called denazification program. The military site in the town was bombed on day one of the Russian campaign against Ukraine. Do you think Ukraine has a government of National Socialists, of Nazis? That is what Putin says. No, I think there is, you know, in, in, in Ukraine, you see that Ukraine in the last year, they give, they give us to, to come to Rabbi Nachman. They, they don't make us problem. I have been living here for seven months and it's been amazing, very loving and very caring to the Jewish people. Putin's called on Ukraine's military to rise against the government, which he says is a gang of drug addicts and neo-Nazis who settled in Kiev and took the entire Ukrainian people hostage. On Tuesday, Russian bombing of Kiev's radio tower also damaged a Holocaust memorial at the Babi Yar, where more than 30,000 people were murdered in 1941. Many tens of thousands were murdered later. Now, Ukraine's Jewish president suggested that Putin is following Hitler's lead. He said this kind of a missile strike demonstrates that for many people in Russia, our Kyiv is absolutely alien. They don't know anything about our capital, about our history. But they have an order to erase our history, to erase our country, to erase all of us. Normalcy has been restored at the National Council on Technical and Vocational Education and Training, NCTVET, and Vocational Training Development Institute, VTDI. This following a meeting with the state-owned entities and the Ministry of Education on Monday. National Workers Union Delegate for NCTVET, Earl Samuels, spoke with our news center this morning. Well, basically, they came to the meeting proposing that they would draft an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding between our trust and the Ministry of Education. And they also indicated that the union would be at the table in the drafting the more fulsome MOU. Full detail, our benefits, and how we move forward with the transition. Mr. Samuels says the workers return to work on Tuesday. In the meantime, NCTVET and VTDI have given the ministry until March 14 to draft the MOU addressing concerns about salary and other contract issues. More could have been said at the meeting than just saying that they're going to be doing a draft MOU. So we're waiting to see what happens in the next two weeks when make our decisions on how we move forward. The entities and the education ministry have been at odds over salary and other contract issues since January. Operations at NCTVET and VTDI were disrupted as workers staged several protests. Questions have been raised over an $822 million increase in an aspect of the budget for the Agriculture Ministry. In the last fiscal year, close to $1.4 billion was budgeted for the executive direction and administration of the ministry. For 2022-2023, the figure is over $2.1 billion. Agriculture Minister Pernell Charles Jr. explained 
that staff is required to increase efficiency and productivity in the ministry. He says $406 million will be used to plan for major investment projects, for example, Yalas West Agricultural Development, Lucky Hill Pen Agricultural Development, as well as piloting an agribusiness cold chain in Jamaica. For the Petroplanes, which is a massive project. So you can understand that it would not be prudent of any country um, to advance a project of that nature without the sufficient preliminary, uh, preliminary work. So a large chunk of it is for that large project. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. The government says it may have to contract private medical facilities to do some of the surgeries that have backed up in the public health system. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton gave the signal during his presentation at Parliament's Standing Finance Committee Tuesday. Dr. Tufton said the state can now begin giving elective surgeries more attention. The authorities say many surgeries were pushed back due to the demand for bed space among COVID patients. that we're looking at the waiting times for particular categories of elective surgeries. We have never really stopped giving priority to emergencies, but to elective surgeries. And the intention is to categorize those, identify the ones with the longest wait, and try to develop a priority program around clearing up that backlog in the coming financial year. That may also, and I'm speaking now in terms of the options that we're looking at, it could also mean some sort of public-private partnership arrangement. So we will we'll provide greater details on that, but there is a need. Now, Jamaica's COVID-19 positivity rate has remained below the World Health Organization's benchmark of 5% for two consecutive days. The Ministry of Health says 29 COVID-19 cases were recorded yesterday from 1,647 samples. This resulted in a positivity rate of 4.6%. An 88-year-old man from St. Thomas is the latest person to die from COVID-19 in Jamaica, increasing the death toll to 2,815. Meanwhile, COVID-19 hospitalizations have declined by 12 to 107. Seven of the patients are severely ill and seven in critical condition. Back to the Russia-Ukraine crisis. A sigh of relief on Wednesday from over 20 students who left war-torn Ukraine following its invasion by Russia eight days ago. As we hear in this report from Cody and Barrett, the students say the journey was long but glad that it's over. An emotional return for 21 Jamaican students who landed at the Sangster International Airport on Wednesday evening from Germany. The students were in Ukraine when Russia began its invasion. But it was a hardest task for the students who had to travel by foot for about nine hours from Lviv to the Polish border in what was near freezing temperatures. One of the students who became ill during the long journey from Ukraine to Poland said she was happy to be home. Because it was very scary, bombs were dropping, you could just see fumes, you just hear noises, persons screaming, that stampede, um, but we're just happy that we're home. Um, the walk, the journey to Poland was very, very scary and tiring. Fourth year medical student Chelsea Williams also shared her experience. It was horrible. <laughs> I don't know what, what, what exactly happened, but I know that it was something bad that happened. Um, I feel very safe to be at home now. I feel very happy. As soon as we crossed the, po the Poland border, that was just a sigh of relief that we were somewhere safe because over in the Ukrainian side, it was like, I know that no second of our life is guaranteed, but while we were there, it, was, it dawned on us that we could just die at any moment. State Minister in the Foreign Ministry, Leslie Campbell, was on hand to meet the students on Wednesday. He noted that psychological and psychiatric help is being provided for the students and implored them to make use of it. It's not going to be easy. It's... it's, it's, it's it's going to take some time for you to resolve all the issues which are uh, contending, which you have to contend with. Um, but the good thing is that you have some support. 
and without so don't start worrying yeah am i going to be able to go back to medical school and everything because whatever has to be done this and the state can intervene to facilitate it it will it will be done in the meantime mr campbell said financial assistance is also being worked on for the students to continue their studies the prime minister made a contribution of 1.8 million jamaican dollars which has gone into a uh, into a special account and where that can and, and i know the leader of the opposition he he showed me that i haven't seen that those funds actually touching the account yet but he has said that there was some figure i think it is 1.5 million or thereabouts so um, those funds are coming in and other private donors will be uh, making contributions and so that in making your decision thereafter whether you are going to go to a local university or wherever, um, some provision will be made. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. An appeal this afternoon from stakeholders of a Princess Margaret Hospital for additional medical equipment. The call came as the facility celebrated 67 years of existence. More from Dwayne Anderson. The Jamaica 60 celebrations will get off to an early start when the Duke and the Duchess of Cambridge pay an official visit to Jamaica between March 22 and 24. And some stakeholders in St. Thomas hope the festivities and planning will spill over to the parish and translate to improvements for a facility that bears the name of a British royalty, the Princess Margaret Hospital. One resident, Seanette Daly, said while the service at the hospital is decent, she wants the facility to improve its medical offerings. What I would like to see at this hospital are um, uh, uh, ultrasounds, machine or something like that because um, sometimes the patient they don't have any money to do the ultrasound and then, you know it costs them to go Kingston or things like that. But experience here to come here and the nurse them treat me good. Nurse Maureen young Sewell started at the facility in the 1990s. She remembers a time when just a handful of medical practitioners were on staff. Now, there are more than 350 staff members. Her wish for this year are similar to those of patients. I've spent most of my time here um, giving service. Actually, what I would like to see happen at Princess Margaret is that we could get other services such as ultrasound, um, CT scans, so that we don't have to be sending the patients into Kingston um, on that terribly road. So I do hope that um, persons who are on the outside looking in, that you can, you know, help Princess Margaret. The Princess Margaret Hospital is older than independent Jamaica. It was officially opened on February 23 in 1955. The facility was built to replace the Morant Bay Hospital, which was ravaged by Hurricane Charlie in 1951. The stakeholders had a ceremony last week to commemorate the 67th anniversary of its opening. The number of persons that we serve is approximately 120,000 persons, and we are classified as a Type C hospital. Despite this classification, however, we can safely say that we are operating above this designation in terms of the quality and the quantity of services that we provide to the citizens. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. Taxi operators in St. Mary are complaining about the deplorable condition of a bypass at Casa Maria in Port Maria. The drivers say they have had enough with trying to navigate the bad roadway and are now calling on the responsible ministry and agencies to intervene. Bad, 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 bad. A mash up with a car front end and then sitting there. Yeah, man. So, who has some, something down the road? Because the road bad, bad, bad. And police out every day kill with ticket and sitting. So, why the road down? Okay, so yeah. The two party, I yeah. get money. So, they need to fix it, man. Please. If I even take money out of your pocket and fix it and show the people them, so watch out. <laughs> I am interested in you, sure. not myself. Sure, because man. I sure, represent man. you. Oh my God, man. I tell you right now. I'm going to care if I put up. I can't take it no more. I give up. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Here's Cody and Barrett. In business news, the Director of Incentive Sales at Playa Hotel and Resorts, Martin Young, says business is back. The hotel chain is seeing heavy requests for proposals, RFP activity for this year and beyond. 
there are certain periods in 2023 and 2024 where our, our availability across all destinations is very limited. And I might add, especially in Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica in the first quarter of 23 and the first quarter of 24 uh, at all of our properties is extremely busy right now. A growing number of businesses are choosing to shut down their operations in Russia. Companies in multiple industries say they are concerned about Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which has sparked widespread outrage across the United States and many European countries. Whether they're pulling out to comply with government sanctions isn't always clear, but reputational risk and practical difficulties are making it hard to do business in the country. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Time now for the top regional and international stories with Sandy Williams. In the region, St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Wednesday joined the call for an immediate ceasefire in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The UN General Assembly has adopted a resolution demanding that Russia immediately end its military operations in Ukraine. St. Vincent and the Grenadines ambassador to the UN, Rhonda King, said her country would vote in favor of the draft resolution calling for an end to the war and a return to diplomacy. Ambassador King repeated St. Vincent and the Grenadines' call for the principles of international law to be applied consistently and upheld as universal truths instead of selective, uneven and unpredictable tools to further great power ambition anywhere and by anyone. On Wednesday, a total of 141 of the 193 UN member states voted in favor of the resolution, which reaffirms Ukrainian sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity. On the international scene, at least 18 people have been killed as an informal gold mine collapsed in Western Guinea. According to a government spokesman, the incident happened on Monday in Gaul, about 240 miles from the capital, Conorri. In recent months, miners have flocked the area in search of gold to pan. Accidents are common at so-called artisan mines across West Africa, which operate without much oversight or regulation. Last May, at least 15 people were killed in a similar incident at an artisan gold mine in the northeastern region of Siguri. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. Thanks, Sandy. We head to a quick break. When we come back, Simon Preston will have your Midday Sports Report. Welcome back. It's now time for Midday Sports. I'm Simon Preston. TVJ Sports understands that Ricky Hill has resigned from his post as head coach of Montego Bay United. It is understood that Hill resigned after Montego Bay United's 3-0 loss to Cavalier on Monday. Hill's seven games comprised one win, one draw and five losses. Those results have left Montego Bay United at the foot of the table on four points. The under-20 reggae girls will face Panama in the round of 16 of the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship in the Dominican Republic on Saturday. This follows Jamaica's nil-all draw against Haiti to end at the group stages in third position on Wednesday. Defender Annabelle Moore is pleased that the Jamaicans are through to the next round and she looked ahead to Jamaica's next opponent, Panama. I mean, we're Jamaican, we compete, this is everything we work for. Um, we have a lot of pride and to make the next tournament is just building on that. Um, we obviously came here to keep going and we intend to keep going and we have a lot of fight and spirit in us and um, it's never not important. Um, I think we just need to calm down, um, play smart, play our game, um, be careful with the, uh, the cards that we're on and the injuries that we have and um, continue to work hard, get ourselves organized and I think we'll be great. Saturday's match kicks off at 6 o'clock Jamaica time. Meanwhile, Jamaica's under-20 men's team have been drawn in Group H of the CONCACAF Under-20 Championship against Honduras, Costa Rica and Antigua and Barbuda. The draw, which took place in Miami early today, will see the top three teams in each group advance to the round of 16 of the competition. This is the first time a CONCACAF Under-20 men's tournament will be played since 2018. The tournament is set to run from June 18 to July 3 in Honduras. 
And finally, this afternoon, Jamaican umpire Jacqueline Williams has been appointed to officiate in match number three of the Women's Cricket World Cup, where defending champions England battles Australia on Friday evening at Jamaica time. This will be the second 50-over World Cup that Williams will be working in after the 2017 tournament in England and Wales. The 45-year-old Williams was the only West Indian umpire selected to officiate in the tournament. The West Indies will open their account this evening against the host New Zealand. And that is it for your midday sports report. I'm Simon Preston. Oshane, it's over to you. Thanks, Simon. And that's the midday news. I'm Oshane Masters. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.